I can have it here. So 42, 6, 7, 8, 3. As humans, we could look at that number and say, I know what that means. There's a, if we put a comma right there, we start from the right, if we're using decimal, and decimal just means it's base 10. It means we have 10 numbers to work with. Now, I originally thought that the human world uses decimal because we have 10 digits. And I did some research, I found out there's more to it than that. But in any event, we have 10 digits and we as humans use base 10, which means our numbers are zero through nine. So we start counting at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then carry the one and go to zero again and continue on. So with base 10, we have 10 different positions. And with an IPv4 address, we're using dotted decimal. So the four numbers that we have in an IP address and the four numbers that we have in a mask are all decimal numbers. And so if we look at 426,783, let's talk about why, and this will be second nature to everybody, but let's talk about why we think that's 426,783. It's because in base 10, I'll put that here, we have 10 numbers to play with, which are zero through nine. In base 10, we have a ones position. So this three right here is in the ones position. And because it's base 10, the next position over is gonna be times 10. So I'll put that here in with a little arrow. And so the next position is the tens position. And then what we're gonna do is just multiply it by 10 again. So the next position over would be the 100s position. And then the next one over is the 1000 position. And then the next one over, just times 10, times 10, times 10, et cetera, that'd be 10,000. And the next, what it really means is that we have four in the 100,000 position. We have two in the tens in the 10,000 position. We have a six in the 1,000 position. We have a seven in the, and we have six in the 1,000s, so that'd be 6,000. And we have a seven 100, so that'd be 700. And then we have no problem whatsoever. So that's base 10, 10 different numbers, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, decimal, and which is base 10. And for the values, we start with a one. And as we go over to the left, we just keep on doubling it. So one, then 10, then 100, then times 10, times 10, times 10. So that's decimal, done that all the time. But what if, let's have some fun with this. What if we encountered an alien species and instead of using base 10, they use base three. Now what that would mean is they only use the numbers of zero, one, and two and then they would carry the one and start over again. So if we saw somebody who was uh, an alien and they were using base three, maybe they had uh, three digits <laughs> and that's why they use base three. I don't know, it's science fiction, we'll make it up. So if they only had three digits to play with and they use base three and they said, oh, the cost is this number, we would need to figure out what their number is in base three compared to base 10. So we could see if, it, you know, if, we, if they wanted to sell us something we would want to know what is the cost in you in um, decimal versus their base three. So let's actually write this out. It'd be a fun exercise. And I just want to get you comfortable with the idea behind different base numbering systems. So decimals, base 10, and we'll do, uh, how about that color? All right, so I think it's called ternary. Uh, anyway, we'll call it base three. The numbers would be uh, zero through two. So zero, one, and two are three different numbers, just like base 10 is 10 different numbers and those are zero through nine. Put that back in the right color there. Whatever it is, we would wanna know what that is in decimal. And so here's how we could solve that riddle. Because it's base three, not base 10, their value positions are going to be times three. So with decimal, base 10, we use 10, and then times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10. With ternary or base three, we start with one as the value. And then every then we go left, and we simply multiply it by three. So this would be a one, always starting on one on the right. And then as we go left, it'd be times three. So that one's pretty easy. And then times three again. So three times three is nine. And then times three again, which would be nine times three is 27. And then we times three again, 81. And if these numbers continued to the left, I would just keep on continuing to multiply by three. So this is our, um, we'll put this as the, the code. Uh, let's put it as um, values, and I'll put this one in yellow. So here are our values. And for us, that would mean the values in decimal for each one of their numbers. So if we wanted to calculate this, it's done exactly like we did with base 10. 
we simply look at each position. So this is the uh, the 81s, the 20s, and for an alien, by the way, for the alien culture, this is totally normal. This is their normal numbering system. They don't think twice about it. But for humans, because it's not base 10, we have to take a second look. So this is the nines position and the threes position and the ones position. So what we would do is same as before. We take each value that's in each of the positions and multiply it out. So two times 81, 281s would be, uh, uh, there's a two there, eight and eight is 16. That'd be 162. I just added 81 twice. And two 27s, uh, seven and seven is 14. Carry the one, there'd be five. So that'd be a decimal value of 54. And then two nines, that one's pretty easy. That's 18. And then three times zero, three zero. <laughs> um, there's nothing in the threes position, so that would be a zero. And then the ones position, we have one one. So that would be exactly one. So if we if we added this up, their 22201 in their weird, wacky base three, based on us identifying the decimal values of each of the positions and then adding those together, uh, it would be 162 plus 54. And let me bring out a calculator because that is going to be important for this discussion. Do I have it running? No. I'll just go ahead and type calc and bring it up. All right. So here's our calculator to, uh, uh oh, can I get it on the screen? Oh, bummer. Let me see if I can ensure. Oh, yeah, there we go. And up, and that will work. That will give us all the important details. Fantastic. So here, what we'd do is we'd say 162 plus 54 plus 18 plus 0 plus 1 equals 235. So what that means to us is that this alien race with their base three numbering system, when they say 22201 for that cup of coffee or that parking spot or whatever it is in decimal, that would be the equivalent to our 235. Just like that. Now, the chances of us actually using that base numbering system of base three is so rare that I'm not gonna have you even try to memorize base three. But the concept, you know, this concept's pretty straightforward. Base three means we start with a one, and then for the values, we times three, times three, times three, times three, times three, going from uh, right to left, and then we just put in the corresponding values of their number above it, and then we can multiply and add those values together. So that concept is solid. It works with any numbering system if we wanna figure out um, what a, the decimal equivalent is. Well, let's talk about binary for a moment. The binary numbering system is a really weird alien race numbering system all of itself, but there's a really good chance we're gonna run, to, run into it a lot because computers, networks, and behind the scenes when we're doing processing and sending things on the network, it's all done with the logic of binary. And binary is like a light switch. It's either an on, like a one, or off, like a zero. In fact, that's their two numbers. <laughs> binary is base two. It means we only have two numbers to play with, a zero and a one. That's it. End of story. And so if somebody came up to us and said, hey, I've got this binary number, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero. In fact, I used to watch this show many years ago called Reboot. And they had a, a like a digital, um, what do you call it, a comedy club. And the, and, the, and the devices, they would be telling jokes like, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, one. Zero, zero, one, 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 one. And the crowd would go wild. And then somebody else would come later, tell the same joke. And it would be dead. And, the, and, the, and the, the punchline was, yeah, you gotta know how to deliver it. But they're delivering jokes in binary. In fact, that's what this shirt is. You know, there's only, well, this will make sense if you don't know already, this, this shirt, <laughs> the joke will be solved here in just less than a few minutes here as we get into the binary. So binary is a bunch of ones and zeros. That's all it is. Zeros and ones, ones and zeros. So if we had to meet an alien race of computers or devices that were using binary and we were concerned, huh, I wonder what, behind the scenes, the decimal equivalent is of some of those numbers, we could play the same game. And I will go ahead and put this in a nice light red. So this is gonna be binary, which is base two. Their numbers are zero through one. So in base 10 decimal, we have zero through nine, which is 10 different numbers. And in binary, they have base two. So if we were given a number, and let's go ahead and use, um, Let's use this number. Let's, uh, let's say they gave us a number of 
one, 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 zero. One, zero, one, one. I mean, that's all they have to play with. They don't have um, anything higher than a, a, the numeric of one. They have zeros and ones, and that's it. And let's say they gave us this number and, and we wanted to s decide, okay, is that a cup of coffee? Is that a parking spot? How do we how do we know in decimal like what that number is? So the binary is just ones and zeros. We're gonna use the same technique that we would use if it was base 10 or base three, but because it's base two, we simply write out the legend regarding what those values are in each of the positions from a decimal perspective. And to do that, it would go something like this. Because it's binary and it's base two, we're basically gonna double we're going to say times two for each of the positions. And so we're going to start, always start with one on the right. One on the right. I want you to remember one on the right. You're always going to start with one on the far, far right. You're going to start with one every time. If it's binary, octal, hexadecimal, decimal, start with one on the right. Okay. A little public service announcement. So we start with a one. And then what we do, because it's binary, the actual legend here, which I will write in, the legend of how to translate this is going to be as you go left, you simply multiply by the base operating base numbering system two. So this is a one times two and times two and times two and times two. What would this one be? So if it's eight times two, what would this position right here be? If you're saying, well, that Keith, that's easy math right there. That might be like eight times two, which is 16. You would be right. Awesome. And if we continue going left, 16 times two is 32. And times two again, 32 times two. So you can add it together, that works, 32 plus 32, or 32 times two, whatever math you wanna do on that, to get two times 32, 64. And times two again is 128. And once you've gone through eight positions, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's, that's pretty much enough, and I'll tell you why. Because when we're working with an IP version four address, it is a decimal number. And that decimal number behind that, there are eight bits, eight light switches, like on and off and on and off, that are being translated for us, for humans, into decimal, so it's easier to read and communicate. And that way we can say the number of like decimal 235 instead of 111001 and the whole string of ones and zeros. So it's a convenience factor for us, but behind the scenes, every number in an IPv4 address, which has the range of zero through 255, it has behind the scenes that's representing that or what's, what's making that is eight bits that are either in on or off um, on or off states that are representing that using binary. So let's translate this together. So if, if somebody came up to us and said, that cup of coffee, that parking spot, that number is 11101011, how the, how the heck do we know what that is in decimal? And the answer is we use the same method we use for um, decimal to decimal, which is no, not really a conversion. And also what we use with the aliens with base three, we simply take the values and we multiply them. So we take the positions. So this is the 16s and the eights and the fours and the twos, and we multiply them. So, okay, Keith, here we go. Uh, because the highest number they have is one. Uh, if, if, they're, if that bit is on, that's 128 from a decimal perspective, plus, and that bit is on, so 64 times 1 is 64, plus 32 times 1 is 32, plus 16 times 0. So there's no value, there's no bit on in that 16's position. So 16 times 0, anything times 0 is 0. Um, there's 8, uh, there's a 1 on in the 8's position, so that would be plus 8 more. There's no, there's nothing on in the 4's position, so that'd be 0. And there is a bit on in the twos position, so we'll bring a two there, and there's a bit on in the one position, so we'll go ahead and bring that in. One times one is one. And that equals, <laughs> I wish I had a calculator, and we do. All right, so if we, um, if we took this, and let's just add these up manually, and then I'll show you the scientific calculator, which we could do it faster and easier, or, or the programming calculator. So this is just the normal calculator in Windows. So if we were to add all these up, it would be something like this. It'd be, I'm gonna use the keypad, 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus zero. I'm gonna add that in just so it's there. Uh, plus eight. Oh, I'm hitting equal. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that works if you're doing multiplication, not addition. Okay, let's start again. I'm gonna start here at the 128 and we'll work our way from left to right. 128 
plus. Oh, that's that's better. And 64 plus. And then the little legend up here is showing us the mass. We can verify it there. Fantastic. 32 plus 0 plus 8 plus and 0 again plus 2 plus 1. And that equals 235. So in measurable terms, a binary 8 bits, of what, if the 8 bits are 1110, 1011, as they are on this on this whiteboard or on this chalkboard, the decimal equivalent of that for us, for our benefit, we could say it's 235. And that's because we simply made the table of the values of each of the positions. And then we did that multiplication of the table versus the values that were on or off. And then we added up the sums of those. And that's how it works. Now, I want to share with you that this game, it's really a game of binary. Um, it's best to be taken in steps. And that's why we're doing subnet Saturdays. And we're going to take these in steps. And so I wanted to cover some specifics with you in this live stream and in this recording. And the first of those things is that I wanted to make sure it's impressed upon your mind that in a binary world, there's only two values. It's called base two, two values, a zero or a one. That's it. It's like light switches, on or off. Think of it like eight light switches in a row. Some of those are on, some of those are off, or maybe they're all on, or maybe they're all off, but that's how binary works. It's got light switch positions, and the only values that they can be are on or off, a one or a zero. So I wanted to make sure that was clear. Secondly, I wanted to make sure that it was it's comfortable for you, and if it's not, I'd like you to do it. I'd like you to write out that um, the, um, the values for binary. So you start on the far right, you write a one, and then the next value over is going to be times two because it's base two. So it'd be one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, stop. And I'd like you to practice that. So if you're watching this, if you're doing in a live uh, session with me right now, you can do that after we're done. But if you're watching the recording of this, I'd ask you to pause and write that out. Start on the right with a one, always a one, whether it's, you know, uh, hexadecimal, decimal, anything else, you're always going to start with a one. And then based on the type of uh, numbering system it is, you take that factor, whether it's base 10 or base two or whatever it is, and multiply it by that. So in binary, the legend is going to be 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. That's it. Just eight positions. That's all we need because we don't need to worry about for one byte of data, which is eight bits, one octet, one IP, V4 decimal number. We don't need to worry about going beyond that just for the values that can be represented. All right. So those are the two things so far. Binary has two positions. I want you to route the legend of 1 through 128, starting on the right. And then my last uh, thing I wanted to cover in this session, and then we'll pick it up and continue the next one, is um, converting from binary to decimal. So if we had to convert, like somebody gave us a number of, uh, you know, 1111011, and we had to convert that to decimal, could we do it? And the answer is, that's just what we did a few moments ago. You already have that skill. <laughs> and it goes something like this. You're given a number. The first thing is you write out this, this legend, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Then you write out the binary number on top of it, and then you simply multiply the top number for the by, by the bottom number. In the case of binary, it's either it's going to be that value or it's going to be zero because the highest they go is a zero or one. And then you take that result and you simply add all those up. That's it. So what I would like to do is I would like to let me bring up another. Let me hide that for a moment. And yeah, let's do this. Let's do a couple exercises. Um, to reinforce this, and I think you'll do great based on what we've done so far. And if not, this is a good opportunity to identify, oh, how do I do that again, and practice it. So I'm going to do a few ac um, examples, or I'm going to ask you to do a few examples, and we'll do one of them together, and I'll leave the rest as exercise for you. So if we were given the number, let me do this in red, perfect. If we were given the number 1, <laughs> I need to add a layer. This is going to look better if you can see it. If we are given the number 1110, and I'm going to put a teeny little space between the next ones and, 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 and 0. In fact, I am going to undo that and give myself more space because that's what I want you to do. Um, if we are given the number 1110, and then 0101, 
And I asked, I told you this is base two, it's binary. What is the decimal equivalent of this? What is the very first thing a person should do besides running for a, a calculator that can do the conversion for you? Um, without a calculator, the first thing we should do is write out the legend with the one on the far right, and then two next, and then the fours position, and eight, and 16, 32, 64, 128. Write those out. That would be the very first step in calculating what the decimal equivalent is, is by writing out that legend. So let's do it. So the legend goes like this, it's base two. So that means we're gonna do a times two basically where I start with one, always, on the far right, and then we'll times two, and then 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 times two. All right, so that's our legend. And I gotta type legend right here, L-E-G. E-N-D, that's our legend, fantastic. And then what we're gonna wanna do after that is say, okay, great, let's total those up. So we're gonna multiply the top binary number by their value, by their legend position, the decimal position that they're in. So this would be 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus zero, zero because 16 times zero is zero. And then for this bit position, it's not on, so there's no eights. And in the fours position, there's the bit on, so it's a four. And there's nothing on in the twos position, so that's gonna be a two, that's gonna be a zero, Keith. And I was getting to the one. And the last one is the one, and there's a one on that position. So we take that and we add that up. 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus four plus one is some value. <laughs> and so we could do that longhand. Uh, just line them up. If you don't have a calculator available, you can just line them up. So 128 plus 64, plus 32, plus four, plus one. So we can do this, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. That'd be a nine there in that position. Carry the one. <laughs> uh, two plus one is three, plus six is nine, 10, 11, 12, that'd be a two there. Carry the one. And three, oh, that's in the, tens position. Okay, so over here we have just one and the one that we carried over, which would be two, which would mean that this binary number, one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, one, in the world of hexadecimal, or in the world of decimal, would equal 229. And the, the, the logic is going to be the same, whether it's eight different numbers uh, in binary, it's to write out that legend, the one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 120. In fact, I have a, this isn't even an uh, embarrassing confession. Um, if I'm taking an exam, because in exams, normally they're not gonna ask you simple questions about uh, subnetting and IP address ranges, which we're, this is where we're leading, by the way, this is where this all matters. Um, I will write out at the top of my paper, <laughs> that legend, one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. And then if I get a tricky question about uh, what subnet is this device in, I'm gonna use that legend, not just for this conversion, but we're gonna use it for other important conversions in the world of IP addressing and subnetting, which will become more important as we go forward. But having that table down now is a great way of converting a binary number into a decimal number. And that same table that I'm encouraging you to write that legend, I would, I would encourage you to practice that. And do it until you can do it like verbatim, and then I would wait a day or two and do it again. So start with one, always one, and with base two, times two, times two, times two as you build that legend. All right, so um, I'm curious on how you did on that one, and I would like to give you some homework for a couple more. So let me go ahead and clear off that layer, and let me add another one, and let me give you some homework. Here's the homework. It is, I would like you to convert the binary numbers of one, one, zero, zero, and I'm gonna put a teeny little space there just to make it more readable. Uh, zero, one, zero, one. That one. Now this space here, so one byte of data, one decimal number in an IPv4 address is made up of eight bits. And just by adding the space, it's really just for educational purposes. That way it's easier to see. Because when you have eight bits, they're all rammed together. You know, sometimes we might uh, repeat one or miss one or, so I just add a little teeny space whenever possible when on the whiteboard so that it's easier to say, okay, great. I get the first four bits or this, and the last five, five bits, five, six, seven, eight, or this, and that's why I do that. All right, so calculate that one. And the next one I'd like you to calculate is this one. 
and also this one. And how about this one? And they all start the same way. It is to draw your legend from 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Put the bits on those appropriate spots in their weighting value. And then the bits that are on, where there's a 1, you take that value and you add it to any other position where the bit's on and you get the total. So I actually would like to do one of these with you, this one right here. And then I'll assign the rest of this homework. So these, these four right here, so these eight right here, let's go ahead and do it. I have a little bit of space over here, so we'll use it, uh, see here. I'm gonna start with the table. One, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. And that's just starting with one on the right, times two, times two, times two, times two, times two, times two, times two. great. And I will, literally, if I'm taking an exam that's gonna involve any type of subnetting or IP addressing, that's one of the first things I put on my sheet of paper they give you as uh, your thinking space and writing out space. Um, I'll, I'll jot that down and then I'll use it probably more than just once in the uh, subnetting questions. Okay, so that's there. And let's take one, 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 one. So there's a one, 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 one. So this, these eight bits represent, these eight bits represent one number in an IP address one of the octets. And that's why they call each of the numbers sometimes octets because they're made up of eight bits. So if we were to convert these eight bits into decimal, we would simply take the bits that are on and take those values, 128 plus 64 plus 32 is on, plus the 16 position is on, plus the eight position is on, plus the four, you get the trend, plus two, plus one. And if we add all of those up, 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, it's going to be, right here, this number is going to be 255. Now, if that number looks familiar to you, that's because you were either, you're either, you've seen IP addresses before, or you're present in our last session regarding the 255s in a mask. And I'd like to, I'd like to share with you an insight as our last thought before I go. And that's this. Take, let, take a peek at this. So in this, we have a mask, which we learned in the last, you know, in the last couple of sessions, we identified that the mask is the dividing line between the network portion in an IP address and the host portion. And so here's the mask in dotted decimal, 255.255.255.0. And we identified anywhere there's a 255, the corresponding IP address from the client is the network. So what that mask means in decimal is means that the 10 over here on the, this side, the 10 is part of the network address. So is the 16, so is the zero. So we could say, hey, this is network 10, 16, zero. This is what the client says, or the device says, that has this IP address and this mask because the mask is the dividing line. Now, on the very bottom ruler, I've identified the mask, but I put it in binary. All ones, that's what 255 means. So. Effectively, what the mask is saying with the 255 is saying all eight bits from the corresponding first number of the IP address is all network. And as the bits continue to be on in the mask, it also means that the IP address of the client continue to be re representing the actual network address. And so in the third octet, the mask is 255. That means the corresponding third octet of the client's IP address is the network. So this is network 10.16.0. And that's because the mask is 255.255.255.0. And behind the scenes, what's really going on is the mask says, in the mask, anywhere there's a bit that's on, that's indicating it's the network address. And anywhere there's a bit that's off in the corresponding customer's IP address from a binary perspective, means we're not stealing that or using that as the network address. So you can kind of think of it like at the bits, and they all have to be in order, by the way, in the mask, they have to be in order. You can't take like one 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 zero one 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 zero zero one one. The mask is going to be contiguous ones until it isn't anymore. So this mask says, okay, the first eight bits are all network. The second group, the second number, the eight, second group of eight bits is all network. The third group of eight bits is all network. And boom, when the mask turns to zero, that is what means there's the dividing line between which portion is used for the network and which portion is used for the host. Da -da. All right, those are important skills to know. 
Uh, I'm creating the series of subnetting that I wish I had received probably close to 30 years ago when I started working with computer networks and first learned about IP. And so let me summarize, make sure I got all the points I wanted to cover in our session today. Uh, first point, binary is base two. There's only two numbers, zero and a one. That's it. That's all they have to play with in the world of computers and networks they use behind the scenes. They're using binary, a bunch of ones and zeros, trillions of them floating through your computer every minute and on the networks, just ones and zeros, ones and zeros, ones and zeros. And uh, it's important as we convert these ones and zeros, especially for an IP address, to have the legend that's built at the bottom. So in that legend, we'll start on the far right and put a one as that position. And then because it's base two, if we want to convert to decimal, we need to go ahead and just keep doubling it by two. So the first position is dot is one. The next position legend is two, and then four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, and stop, because that's eight bits. That's as high as we need to go for calculating or converting a binary number into decimal. And then third, we identified how to convert the values. You simply take the binary number, and you take the, the positions, the decimal equivalent for each of the positions, and then you multiply them, take the result down there, and add them together. Now, what happens if you have five bits, like one, zero, two, <laughs> <laughs> You'll never see a two in a binary number. So let's say you have a binary number of five bits, one, zero, one, one, zero, just like that. Well, you really only have to go up to the fifth position, the one, two, four, eight, 16 position, but nor, and then the, the higher order bits would all be zeros. So you just go up as far as you need to, to convert the number you're at. But when working with IP version four addresses, just realize that um, each number, each decimal number that we see, like these guys, each one of them, the 10, 16, 0, 10, each of these numbers in an IP version 4 address is being represented by 8 bits. And that does mean there's going to be some leading zeros in binary that are going to be there, but it's the 8 bits that are representing these each and every number. All right, so your homework assignment is this. I would love it if you would take this number, 1100, and this number, which is all zeros, which that won't be a lot of math right there. And then this one, which is one zero 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 zero. And uh, do me a favor, <laughs> um, instead of posting the answers to what those values are, um, if you leave a comment and just say something to the effect of, yep, I calculated uh, the three binary numbers uh, into decimal, that'd be great. And that way somebody else who's doing it and so forth um, we'll have a nice opportunity if they want to, to actually solve it. Um, you know what, or, or yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. And if somebody slips and puts the answer in, that's not the end of the world either. But I want to make sure that you have some practice in those, uh, in the, in the mode of converting a binary number into decimal. So that's the homework. You can skip back in the recording and take a look at it if you want. Uh, but let me say thank you for everybody who's joined us for Subnetting Saturday. This is being put into a playlist by itself. So it's part of the CCNA 200301 master playlist. So you can see it there. Or I have a separate playlist called Subnet Saturday where I'm just putting these in order. And that way, as we progress through it, we have some great stuff coming, including, well, in this video, we took a look at binary base two, how to convert a binary number to decimal. But what if we have a decimal number like 16 or Boy, these are all really easy. Um, or they will be after our next session. But what if we have a decimal number and we need to convert it to binary? And uh, how do you do that? I'll explain that. We'll talk about that. Also, let me share with you why this is so important. When, you're work when we are working with variable length subnet masking, where we're changing the mask in different parts of the network to conserve IP address spaces or to do summarization, all topics which we'll, we'll talk about step by step, it's important to understand behind the scenes what's going on with the binary because that is going to help us identify how to do summarization and where we can break the networks up into smaller networks. And let's talk about the shirt for a second. I'd like you to take a look at the number right here. I think it's right there. I look at my name. <laughs> yeah, one zero. There are only one zero type of people in the world. And let's go to the whiteboard and make sure we're all really clear with what that means. Let me hide this layer too. And let me bring up one more layer. All right. If there's only that many people <laughs> um, in the world, people who understand binary and people who don't, if this is a binary number, which it is, how would we convert that into decimal? 
And the answer is, Keith, wait a sec. I think I might have a tingle here. I got it. Uh, if we're converting a binary number to decimal, we're going to start with this legend always. Base 2, starting with a 1, times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2. Let me make sure I got that right. I did. So starting from the right, going left, times 2 because it's base 2. And then you drop on this number. So this number is 0, 1. And then all these numbers here would be all zeroed out. So it could be 0, 0, 0, 0. But normally in any numbering system, we leave off leading zeros because there's no need to have them there. All right. So if we did this conversion, and all these are not going to matter for this. All that's going to matter is here. It would be 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times 0 is 0. Add those together, it would be 2. So this number right here of 1, 0 in binary is a decimal of 2. <laughs> and that skill... If you would practice with me and rehearse as I've asked you to, um, you'll have that ability to do with binary numbers converting them. And that's why this shirt, for some people, can be funny. <laughs> for other people, it's like, there's only 10 types of people? And that's assuming if it was decimal, it'd mean 10. Um, but it's binary, so it means there's only two types of people, those who get binary and those who don't. <laughs> That's a long explanation. So, hey, what was the Subnet Saturday about? We found out how to calculate why that shirt might be funny. Um, and I say might with a big grin there. All right, let me bring back the homework assignment. And it's right here. So I'd like you to convert uh, 11000101, all zeros, and also the 10000000 into their decimal equivalent. That's your homework assignment. And I look forward to seeing you in our next session. So it's day is it? It's Saturday. So I have another live stream tomorrow uh, regarding um, CCNA topics and <laughs> I don't have it in front of me, but it's going to be amazing. <laughs> um, I, I literally am, I've got several irons in the fire. So it's going to be something related to CCNA 20301, something that's important, something that's relevant and something that'll be valuable in your track in your studies. So three, three requests going out. Number one, if you haven't already, Please subscribe, hit the alert bell so you can find out when the new videos are coming out. I update my playlist every week, and so hit those playlists and go to the one that's most applicable to you and enjoy them. Secondly, get a study buddy, somebody you can talk to, work with, somebody who's like-minded, somebody who's energetic, somebody who's like, yeah, you can do it, and practice and learn, have fun doing it. And then the third is I'd like you to do this exercise right here with those three other numbers and comment in the post or in the, in the messages, in the notes below, in the comments below that you did it. And that's great. And that will prepare you for our next session where we'll take a look at how to convert from a decimal number, like 10, like this number or this number or this number or this number into binary, which is also a really important skill when it comes down to working with IP subnets and subnetting, which we're all leading to. So that's it. Have a great, great day. I appreciate you being here. And until our next session together, be well, study hard. And uh, I'm very, very grateful to have you on this channel. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.